Sherdot.com here with Randy, the National Couture, your Extreme Couture Training Center. It's amazing here. Uh, we've been here for a couple days, and there's, what, a plethora of top-notch talent. What's it like coming out here for you? Um, still, obviously, we know you're not able to get in the ring right now, but what's it mm -hmm. like coming in and training with these kind of guys? Oh, it's fun. Absolute blast. I love it. Uh, and we've got a ridiculous crew in here. You know, we've got Jacare in town, uh, Robert Drysdale's added to our staff for jiu-jitsu. Forrest is back from the TV show. Um, so, and we've got Sam Stout and Chris Hordesky in getting ready for their next fights. So uh, it's, every day's a good day coming in here. That's the good stuff. The bad stuff is, you know, the legal proceedings, all that going on. You recently came out and said there's no way, you know, you're going to be back with the UFC. Where, where do you stand on this stuff now? And, you know, what can you comment on? Well, I, I mean, I just don't see why I'd want to go back and fight uh, for the UFC, all the kind of underhanded things that have been said and done and, and uh, kind of the way they've played have kind of showed to me their, their true colors in this whole thing. And, um, you know, that's the way it goes. It's unfortunate that it's, that it's come to that. And you know, I've spent 10 plus years of my life working for this company and, and uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, at this point, the contract is up in July. We're still waiting for a declaration from the state of Nevada on the language in the contract because we interpret it differently than, than Zufa does, obviously. But uh, by our estimation, I'm free and clear in July to uh, start pursuing the Fedor fight. Uh, Fedor has his own issues with M1 and all the stuff he's got going on. But I think things are going to align. They all have a way of working themselves out, and I think it's going to be great. I look forward to it. And I'm just having fun training now, picking up some new uh, grappling skills from Bo Jacare and Robert. And, uh, and they're both slick, very, very good. And, and um, having a good time keeping my fitness up where it should be and, and uh, working on the next movie gig, see when that's going to happen. Uh, Anything just, you can give us insight into that? Any ideas? Uh, it's a very fickle and interesting business. Uh, I've read for a few parts recently and, and uh, read for an HBO series, which would be very cool, kind of a West Coast version of Sopranos, more grounded in, in a biker gang type of a, of a scenario. Uh, but uh, nothing set for sure right now. Uh, just keep reading and plugging away. I'm being considered for a couple of the parts but I, that I've read, I've read for, but just don't know until it happens. So it's, uh, it'd be premature to, to, to say anything about any of them until the dotted line is, is signed. So You know how that goes, especially coming from the MMA side of things now. But, uh, um, you know, that fight has been something you've been chasing for a long time, the Fedor fight, ever since, uh, you know, People have decided he's number one and you're number two. What is it going to mean to you if you finally do get to fight him? Well, I think it, it means a lot on a lot of levels. I, I think it will be the culmination of this whole struggle with, with Zufa. Um, I think it, it, it has the potential to change the way fighters are paid in our sport, which means a lot to me. There's a lot of guys that scratch out a living here, and, and uh, it gives them hope that at some point they can be paid like some of the other pro athletes in our country get paid. And, uh, I'm excited about that, but I think first and foremost, I'm, I'm excited about finally getting the opportunity to compete against this guy uh, because I've admired the way he competes and, and technically the things that he does, and uh, that's the guy I want to test myself against. So. Now, you know, the way you describe it, it almost sounds like not it's not a complete ana or analogy, but Kurt Flood from baseball, he had to go up and take a stand against the reserve clause to create free agency in baseball. Is that something you see yourself, you know, kind of, you know, not putting yourself up on a pedestal, but being a trailblazer for the sport. Um, well, I, I don't know. I'm just doing what I think is right at this point. It's right for me, and and if consequently it's right for other guys down the road, that's great. I don't really put it in those terms. Uh, I do find myself in a unique situation in my career that there's light at the end of the tunnel for me. I'm really only planning on fighting one, maybe two more times, and so I'm not relying on a on, on a whole future of of making money in this sport ahead of me and worried about irritating the, the powers of the bee. Uh, so that kind of puts me in a unique spot that I can kind of poke the giant and, and hopefully affect some change. And Is that something you had to worry about earlier in your career? Because, I mean, I don't think it's, you know, it might not be common knowledge, but there are people who understand you had problems with these guys before with the way they promoted you or never really gave you a chance uh, in the fights they put you in, just always saw you as a stepping stone for people. I mean, is that something that came out because you see this light at the end of the tunnel now? Uh, not really, you know, I had the issues I've had all along and, and uh, I'm just the type of person that I am. I just keep my mouth shut and do what I do and 
more often than not, that worked out for me. I came out on the top end of things and, and won those fights or won in those situations. And uh, that's just been my approach to just about everything. But at some point, I realized that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I want this one fight because it makes sense at this stage of my career. I don't have many fights left. And, and for, for that, I'm willing to fight uh, outside of the ring to make it happen. What does that say? You know about your willingness to do that now after all these years does that does that say something about the way the company treats people or does that say something about maybe where you are in your life now uh, probably both I think uh, certainly this stage of my career the latter stage of my career it, it means more to, to really you know get a chance to be considered the best fighter in, in my weight class uh, I think uh, nobody can take away the things that Zufa has accomplished in resurrecting the sport and and, and I think their whole motto when they bought the company was they want to put the athletes first and see the athletes as, as the commodity and push the athletes and their whole ad campaign in the beginning and all that uh, was geared towards that and I think somewhere along the way when the big checks started coming in and things started turning around they lost sight of that and uh, you know yeah they you know they complained that you know their troubles began when they started paying athletes a million dollars for a fight but you know in the grand scheme of professional athletics in our country that a million dollars is a minimal payment for what a lot of guys get. And, you know, it boils down to not always being about money, but but being paid, you know, equality, being paid for what the work that we do is in our sport and, and what we accomplish. And this is the sport of of the future for combatives. And I think uh, we should be getting paid what boxers get paid, certainly, and and if if not more. So hopefully we can affect that. Is there anything you regret about this, uh, about this whole kind of, you know, parade of, you know, publicity and all the stuff that's come along with this? I know, I know, it's, you know, some people have taken liberties with you, your image, and you know, your wife as well. It's got to be tough to deal with as well. Well, certainly the attacks on Kim are, are unwarranted, and I don't understand why everybody wants to blame her for everything that happens in my career and my life. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I make my own decisions and. Um, you know, it's unfortunate to me. I was kind of surprised that the media ran with the re the resignation the way they did. And you know, uh, had I anticipated that, I might have done it a little differently. I didn't want it to be a big blown up thing. I wanted it to be w what it was to make my statement and do my thing within the company. I wasn't trying to, to make a big public thing out of it, and it turned into that. And uh, I think consequently, the repercussions were that Zufa and, and Dana, especially, have been backlashing out at me and, and my wife and everybody else with regard to Extreme Couture because of that and uh, you know I don't, I don't think it has to be that way. What's it like for your fighters who still fight for the UFC? Is that a tough situation for you? You know it's a, I don't think it's been that big an issue obviously they're, they can't wear the clothes for all the guys that we sponsored they can't wear the gym patch uh, which everybody knows where those guys train anyway uh, so you know, I don't think there's been any repercussions for them, and that was a big concern of mine. I think ultimately those guys stand alone. They fight and do what they do, and they're good at what they do, and, and their performances speak for themselves, irregardless of me. And uh, I'm thankful that they have the faith in this gym and, and in all the guys, the team, that, that they're still here and they're not worried about that either. Well, we want to wish you the best of luck in everything. Hopefully uh, things work out for you. And thanks for taking the time with us, Randy. No worries. I think things will be great. Everything works out.